Have you ever been watching television late at night and an infomercial pops up and within the first five minutes you're sucked in and you feel like you really, really need whatever it is they're selling that you have to have that in your life? I'm guilty. I, I used to watch the shopping channel on a regular basis and the Canada Post guy was here all the time delivering packages, but I've since gotten away from it because in the last few years as I'm getting older, I'm realizing I don't need all of these things. So I would rather have less things, but things that I truly love and use and, you know, will use on a regular basis. So I would love to hear what some of the things are on your list of things you no longer buy. So the first thing is books. I love to read and I love to read from a book, not from my iPad. But instead of buying books, I joined my library. It's free and you can borrow the books. You can, you know, take them out for three weeks. And if you need longer, you can add the time online. It is just, first of all, cheaper because I've always found like with books, once you read it, what good is it? Like you're going to have to pass it on to somebody else or else it just sits in your house collecting dust. So I've quit buying books and now I borrow them. Number two is magazines. At one point, like 10 years ago, I think I had like four or five magazine subscriptions. I had People, Us Weekly, we had McLean's, like so many different magazines. And half the time I wouldn't read them. I'd maybe skim through them, look at the pictures, but I just had to have them. And they're just so darn expensive anymore. I think I went to buy a magazine a while ago and it was like $17. It's like, no way. So I found out that I can also borrow them from the library. And in the last year, they're moving more away from the uh, actual magazine. Now it's a digital subscription, which I think is great because it's great for the environment. So I don't mind reading a magazine on the iPad. And as I said, like you're, I'm saving money, I can read them for free and we're not like, you know, cutting down trees just to read, make a magazine that you're going to read and then recycle. Next up are cookbooks. I must have 20 cookbooks in my pantry and I have a huge box of my mom's cookbooks that I still have to go through. And she has some really, really old cookbooks, like from the 30s and 40s, you know, those good hearty family recipes. So I'm definitely holding on to them and maybe next winter I'll have the time to go through them. But I no longer buy cookbooks because I just Google a recipe and then I'll just like save it on Pinterest and then you just have that digital copy. Because first of all, I'm saving money, but I also don't have to store the cookbooks. And truth be told, I probably rotate between five and 10 of the same dishes all the time. We're not great big foodies. We, you know, just have a simple lifestyle. And most of the time I don't even need to follow a recipe because I have it up here. Do you remember in the 80s and 90s when crafts were really big? I know around here they'd have craft shows for the spring and the summer, the fall, Christmas, and they always were really heavy with those fake flowers. And I don't know how many times I bought wreaths for different seasons or, you know, artificial flowers to put on the table. And they just sit there and they collect dust. And it's like, how do you clean these things? So they ended up going, you know, to Value Village or uh, for recycling. So I feel like craft fairs, at least around here, they're not as big as they once were. And with places like Home Sense or Home Goods, you know, you can go and pick up stuff there that's pretty cheap. And um, yeah, I just, I've gotten away from those craft types of things. I've become more of a minimalist with my decorating because I just like things to be very clean, but yet welcoming, if that makes sense. Have you ever fallen trapped to the souvenir store? You know, you go to Disney World or you go somewhere else and you just have to have the t-shirt or you have to have that snow globe or that bumper sticker. I quit buying souvenirs a long time ago. What I prefer to do instead is the money that I would spend on a souvenir, I would rather spend that money on an experience. For instance, when my daughter and I went to Maui last year, we went on the Atlantis submarine tour in Maui and it was amazing. It was something I had always wanted to do and we ended up seeing, I think, two or three different sharks. We saw some stingrays, tropical fish, you know, sunken boat. I would so much rather have those memories than a bumper sticker for my car saying that, you know, I was in Hawaii. Memories are so, so important, especially as we get older and we start losing people in our life. So that's, I no longer buy souvenirs. 
The next thing that I quit buying a few years back is eyelid primer. As somebody that has oily eyelids and oily skin, I do use a primer. But instead of buying a specific eyelid primer, which can be, you know, expensive enough, I end up using most of the time the MAC Paint Pot, which is an eyeshadow. And I have it in the shade Painterly. That's what goes best with my skin tone. Lots of times that's all I will wear for my eyeshadow. I think that's what I have on today. It just hides any blueness or discoloration. And if I wear it as a base, my powder or my cream eyeshadows really, really have a long staying power and they will last all day long and look as fresh in the evening when I take them off as when I first applied it. So you don't really need a separate eyelid primer. You could also use concealer. I'll also use that sometimes and then I'll just... Um, you know, put a light dusting of setting powder on just to make sure that it stays there before I apply my eyeshadow or I'll just wear the concealer with the translucent powder. Oh gosh, this is a big one. I am a sucker for exercise equipment and we have a room in our basement that is called our gym. I think in there when my daughter has her Peloton bike, I have a Pilates machine, I have my step, you know, from the aerobic step thing and then our treadmill. My husband's been using the treadmill to exercise every day. I don't like a treadmill. I'd rather walk outside or else do like a walking DVD. But every New Year's Eve, I would fall trapped to this. I would watch the shopping channel. I was bored. And oh, they'd have, you know, like the um, Tony little, I think it was the Gazelle, it had that. They had a cross country ski machine. I had that at one time. I had the whole Bowflex, you know, weight thing, did that. These things are great if you have the room because you can hang clothes that you're not using on them because most of the time that's what we use them for. So I've come to realize I am not a gym person and I'm not a gym person even if it is in my own house. So for me, I'm a walker. That's all that I need. And, you know, a few free weights. That's all I need to do. My, um, well, now I don't even need DVDs. I can watch them on YouTube or download them on a streaming service. So yeah, for me, I spent a lot of money on exercise equipment throughout the year. And um, I just, I'm not an exerciser. I feel like if I would have started when I was younger and kept it up throughout my life, it would be so much more easier now but I'm happy just to walk. I no longer purchase photo albums. I have so many boxes of photo albums that, you know, I haven't even looked at them in, what? We moved from our original house five years ago now. I haven't looked at them. I much prefer to look at my photos on the computer or on the TV. And then I will print off, you know, a few and I'll put them in a frame. But just to print off photos, like it's to me, it's just wasteful because I'm never going to look at them. And I so much more enjoy looking at them like as a digital copy on my phone or on my laptop. And remember, like, it, I don't know, back in the 80s or 90s, when you take photos before digital cameras were a thing and you'd have to like develop the whole film and you'd get them back. And like half of the pictures were no good because you took a picture of your thumb or somebody's head is cut off. It's just such a waste. So I wish we would have had digital cameras way back then because it would have been nice to have whenever my daughter was growing up just to, um, you know, take pictures and actually see if they turned out as I was snapping them. Oh my gosh, another infomercial that gets me all the time are kitchen appliances. I had to buy a KitchenAid mixer, which I use on occasion. I'm not a big baker, but I do use it uh, when I make cookies, but I also use it at Christmas time to make my dad's meat uh, stuffing. I bought the attachment like to make, um, well, it's a grinder and I can make his stuffing in like, you know, 20 minutes with this attachment. Whereas before we had to do it by hand, it would take a couple of hours. I also have like an immersion blender, which I think I've used once in my life, a toaster oven, which I, we no longer use. There's just all of these gadgets that whenever you're watching like a cooking segment, you know, the hosts, they talk it up. Oh, you need this. Like you're going to become this awesome cook and you're going to make homemade asparagus soup if you have this immersion blender. So I fall prey to that. I buy it. And then it's, you know, it's still sitting in the uh, pantry and it's probably going to go on a yard sale or go to the donation place. So yeah, another thing that I have wasted money on is kitchen appliances and I refuse to buy them 
in the future unless I absolutely need to replace something that I do use or it's something that I really do need and I know that I will use. I rarely, if ever, pay full price for anything. That is clothes, anything, makeup, anything that I use. I always wait till they're on sale. I refuse to pay full price because we know that things always do come on sale. You can sign up for Rakuten. I'll put a link below for both Canada and the US. You uh, download this little icon and before you hit purchase on a store's website, if you see that the icon is flashing, you can get up to sometimes 10, 12% cash back. So if I buy like a hundred dollar pair of shoes, I'm going to make $10. So it's just a way for companies to reward the consumer. You remember like years ago, we'd have like coupons. Think of it as that. It's totally legit. It's not a scam. And since I've started recruiting, I don't know, maybe three, four or five years ago, I think I've saved around $1,700. Well, I didn't save, I got that money back because every quarter they'll put it into my PayPal account or they'll mail me a check. So really check out Rakuten. You can uh, find some good deals on there as well. If you're enjoying my video and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers and it would really help my channel to grow. And if you're enjoying this content, just give it a thumbs up. That just lets me know that you like these types of videos. The next thing that I have quit buying, I may buy the occasional one. And this Christmas I did send cards out, but we hardly received any cards back. And that's not why we send them out. But my point is they've gotten so expensive, like birthday cards. If you want a nice birthday card, they're $10. And then to mail a birthday card or any card now, I think it's like a dollar or a dollar 10 Canada. If it's within Canada and it's going to the US, it's close to $2. So it's really gotten ridiculous. So what I prefer to do is I will text someone or I will actually call them on the phone to wish them happy birthday or I'll invite them out to lunch because you know, the $10 you're spending on a card, you could go out to lunch. It's not going to cost you that much more. And you know, you spend an hour with somebody that means something to you. And it's just, it's a nice memory because what are they going to do? They're going to open up the birthday card. It's going to sit on their mantle and you know, the next week it's going to be in the recycling bin. So it's really a waste of money and it's kind of, you know, bad for the environment, but it is nice to receive a card. I know I, I get that too, but they just seem to be like, there's something that's, um, I know kind of being phased out. I'm no longer buying plastic food storage containers. I'm trying to get away from plastic and slowly, but surely I'm switching over to glass. I like the glass because, you know, you don't have to worry about any of the plastic chemicals. Uh, it can go in the dishwasher. I know they still have plastic lids. I wash them by hand. I prefer not to put them in the dishwasher just because sometimes they kind of lose their shape, but also they get, you know, like if um, those watermarks on them and then they don't look so nice. So I'm definitely getting away from plastics, like food storage containers, plastic dishes, you know, if you're having a, a party. I'd just rather use glass. Something else that I no longer purchase is fancy china. When we first got married, my mother-in-law started us on a set and I knew I wasn't gonna use it because we're not fancy people. I'd pull it out maybe once or twice a year. So whenever we moved like five years ago when we sold the farm and we, um, we moved into town, I just sold them because our family's getting smaller and I have just a nice set. It's plain of white dishes that I bought on a Wayfair. I think there's like 20 or 24 plates and we just use those. And I like white because say it's Christmas time, you know, you can get a nice colorful placemat or a napkin and white is so interchangeable. There's just so many ways that you can use white dishes and, you know, um, kind of spruce them up for every occasion, every holiday. So we've certainly got away from fancy china. You know, I don't even have a coffee maker because we don't drink coffee or tea. So if you come to my house, sorry, but you're gonna have to go to Tim Hortons for a cup of coffee because I don't have a coffee maker and probably don't have coffee either. The next thing that I no longer buy, well, I do my very best to avoid it and that is fast fashion. And by fast fashion, I mean those really big stores that mass produce the same t-shirt, you know, 10,000 times. Um, I'm trying to really invest in clothing that is sustainable, that is going to last me a long time. And, 
you know, I'm going to be 56 years old. I've worked hard all my life. I've raised my daughter and I feel that now I deserve to, you know, dress in nice clothes. And I certainly feel that whenever I wear nice clothes, I feel much more confident and um, just better about myself because, you know, as, as women, especially in our age range, you know, we're at a time in our life where you might be having to take care of your parents or, um, you know, a friend that might be sick or a spouse that is sick. And it's really important just to really honor yourself and wear nice clothing for yourself because it really does go a long way, I find, in making me feel confident and good about myself. And whenever I feel that way, I'm more apt to want to take better care of myself. Because if I was just wearing, you know, like old tattered clothes, it would probably make me feel kind of like lazy and maybe I wouldn't want to take the best care of myself. So that's just something I find that works for me. So I just wanted to um, put it out there. Of course, if you follow trends, you know, you could always sprinkle in a few less expensive pieces if you want to be a little trendy. But for like uh, basics, I really do myself try to invest in better quality ones. And by better quality, I mean like, you know, places for like Talbots I find has really good clothing. A lot of you like Chico's, um, I like Spanx. I really like their clothing and it's very good quality. Athleta has very good quality. And you know, I've bought t-shirts from places like Old Navy and there's nothing wrong with that. But honestly, I could buy a t-shirt from say Banana Republic or Talbots when they're on sale and it's pretty much almost the same price, but you can tell like the quality is a lot different. So that's just something that I'm uh, conscious of and trying to um, do. I refuse to buy cheap hangers. I like the ones that are velvet, they're on Amazon. You can get them all the same color so your closet looks really nice. They're like beige, you can get black. I think there's other colors as well, but I like the velvet ones because whenever I put my clothing on to hang, they really keep their shape. You know those really cheap wire hangers you get from the dry cleaners? They just bend all over and they're not that great for your clothes because your clothes can you know lose their shape. So I really think it's worth investing in nice hangers. And I like nice wooden hangers for our front closet for our winter coats. They're nice and heavy, so you don't have to worry about like our heavy coats, you know, falling or bending or the uh, hanger breaking. I used to spend a lot of money on these plug-in air fresheners and they were nice. You know, the house would smell good for maybe a couple of days, but they just dried out. And another thing I found was I found the part that you plug into the wall outlet, a lot of times they've become really, really hot. So I'm kind of leery of leaving things like that plugged in, even, you know, when we are home, because say you're sleeping, like a fire could break out. So I still like air fresheners, but what I will do maybe sometimes in the winter time, I'll just boil some water and put some cinnamon sticks on the stove, or I'll get those uh, reed diffusers. You can buy them, you know, Sephora, wherever. Uh, and they are nice like in a powder room, you know, when you have guests come over, just kind of like makes that area smell a little fresher. I do like air fresheners, but those ones that plug in the wall, I've gotten away from them because they just make me a little nervous and I find they don't last. The next thing that I no longer spend money on is diet food. And by diet food, I mean, whenever I was going to Weight Watchers, they always had like their Weight Watcher snacks and some of them were pretty good. But really, you can go to Walmart or wherever you do your groceries if you want snacks and portion them yourself into little containers and, you know, you're going to save money. But also, these snacks aren't really that healthy. So instead, what I will do is I would rather like make a fruit tray or a veggie tray or have some nuts or cheese sticks and that's what um, I prefer to eat. So my go-to snack is if I'm really hungry, I'll have an apple. My favorite apple is a honey crisp, but they're so hard to get at this time of the year because they just don't taste the same as they do like when they're freshly picked off the tree. And then I will uh, cut my apple up and I'll just sprinkle a little bit of salt on my apple. And then I'll have about 10 almonds and a cheese stick. And that's my little charcuterie board. And lots of times I'll have this, if we've had a late lunch or a big lunch, that will be my dinner. 
or if I'm still kind of like hungry at night and we're watching TV, then I'll have like some almonds with a cheese stick or uh, almonds or a few walnuts with some uh, Greek yogurt because you want to make sure that you have your protein with a fat or a fiber just to make it a balanced snack. That's what I've learned from the dietitian and uh, that's my go-to snack. Have you ever bought subscription boxes? There are so many in the past that I have bought and yes, they are fun to get. It's like Christmas morning, you forgot that you ordered it and the doorbell rings and Purolators just dropped off, you know, a fun fit fab box or a simply beautiful box or there's just so many of them. But truth be told, 90% of the time, the stuff that's in the subscription box is just going to the donation pile. Very rarely would I keep anything. And those suckers are expensive. They're around $50. And then if you have to get them shipped to Canada, you're probably looking at about $70. So for my $70, I would rather just go shop online at a store that I like, buy myself something that I know that I'm going to use and love. And yeah, I will no longer be um, buying subscription boxes. But I mean, you know, if somebody wants to send me a subscription box, I would take it, but yeah, they, they're a waste of money, I think, in my opinion. This is a big one, and I started this a few years ago, and I'm trying to become more mindful of clothing, I told you that, but whenever I'm buying clothing, it has to wow me. If I try it on and it's just like, eh, then it's not for me. I'm just gonna like send it back, and I'm gonna wait until something does wow me. And also when I'm buying a piece of clothing, I'm buying it because it has to work in with different outfits. So I should be able to make two or three separate outfits from that. So that's why whenever I'm buying basics, I like to go with black or navy as my base color. And then I'll um, pop in, you know, colorful tops or scarves or maybe an outer jacket in a different color or shoes or, you know, makeup or something. I have a lot of clothes in my closet that no longer really make me happy and they're no longer who I am. Plus I've lost weight, so I, I need to clean them out of my closet. But I find like as I'm on this weight loss journey, I am kind of figuring out what my style is and it's a slow process, but I feel like as I'm losing weight and I'm beginning to feel better about my appearance, that it's fun to try different things so yeah, like whenever I get to my goal weight, I'm kind of curious to see what kind of clothes I'm going to be wearing. So that's kind of fun. And this next one is a big one. Those sample size toiletries. I have quit buying them. First of all, they're expensive. Like a little sample size so it can fit into your liquids bag sometimes is maybe 20 cents more expensive than the full size and I still would buy the sample size like what are you thinking so what I did was I went on Amazon I invested in some good quality refillable reusable travel containers that are TSA approved because I like to travel carry on if I can most of the time and I will just fill the containers up with the stuff that I already have at home or if I get samples, say if I place an order at Sephora, I will save like a cleanser sample or a mascara for whenever I travel. So I have quit buying a uh, sample size. The only time I'll buy sample size is I usually don't buy a full tube of mascara because I just don't work my way through it before it's time to throw out. So I have found what works best for me is if it's available in travel size, it's sometimes half the price. And, you know, I don't feel like I'm wasting my money because I'll probably end up using the sample size before it is um, ready for the garbage. So if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel. Give it a thumbs up. If you haven't seen any of my 2024 fashion trends videos, I will link the playlist here. Be sure to go check those videos out. I'll see you soon. Bye.